Creative Brain Candy by Creators for Creators. You're listening to Simply Stogies, a monthly podcast dedicated to the cigar enthusiast. Light up a stogie, sit back and relax while James brings you along on his journey as a new cigar smoker. Simply Stogies will review cigars, discuss topics that cigar aficionados find important, and will probably learn a few things along the way. Now, here's your host of Simply Stogies, James. Welcome to Simply Stogies. I am your host, James. This week, we have a very special guest with us. Uh, for those of you who have been smoking small batch, small company boutique cigars for a long time may remember this company. Uh, and I'm very excited to have Antonio Lamb from Reynado Cigars with us. Uh, Antonio, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, James. Thank you so much. Really, really excited and happy to be here. Uh, we're very happy to have you. Uh, we've got a lot to cover. There's a lot to to unpack with your journey and where you've been because you were around for a while and then you went on a hiatus and now you're back and we're very happy to have you back. We're going to talk about the Grand Apex, which, by the way, is a great cigar. Absolutely phenomenal. The review should be out on the website now, simplystogies.com. Go check that out. If you haven't tried the Grand Apex, definitely give it a shot. But before we talk to Antonio, uh, I want to invite you to go to creativebringcandy.com and check out the great family of podcasts that we have there, including the video game lounge, the video game lounge is no news, just video games and brews. Uh, the three guys there talk about video games. They talk about retro video games. They talk about the things in the industry. They talk about their journey uh, through video games. So if you're into video games, check out the video game lounge on creatorbraincandy.com or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're on the internet, Make sure you go to OxfordCigarCompany.com and any order you place there, use coupon code SIMPLYSTOGIES for 10% off. You'll be supporting not only OxfordCigarCompany.com, but Simply Stogies as well. 10% off coupon code SIMPLYSTOGIES only at OxfordCigarCompany.com. And I'm done shilling for the moment. Antonio, welcome uh, to the program, man. Like, we said, like I said, I'm super excited to have you here because you have such a great story and it's it's all about family, and I'm big on that. There's a lot of cigar companies out there now that don't really understand the importance of family uh, and, and what that, but there are some that really get it, that really absolutely get it. Crown Heads comes to mind, John Huber, uh, Jeremy Castagli, Castagli Cigars. So we want to talk about your journey, and, and every journey starts at the same point at the beginning. How, how did... How did you get into cigars, Antonio? Okay, so um, I got into cigars by being a really, really uh, hardcore cigar geek. Um, my family doesn't come from a, uh, a line of cigars, a lineage of cigars, although uh, we are Cuban in heritage, uh, Cuban Chinese. So um, my grandfathers both emigrated from China and they married uh, Cuban women uh, in Cuba. So hence the Cuban Chinese, um, which makes for great food. I always tell everybody, it makes for amazingly <laughs> great food. I mean, I'm telling you, uh, my mother makes the best fried rice, homemade fried rice you'll ever find. Um, <clears throat> and paired up with some, you know, fried plantains and some of that Cuban style steak. I mean, that's a, that's a home run right there. That sounds like it. Yeah. That might be my next blend. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't know, but, um, uh, and can I just plug the website? Really? Yeah, quickly? absolutely. Please. Yeah. www.reinado, R-E-I-N-A-D-O, premium cigars with an S.com. Please go there. Learn more about us. Uh, we're putting up stuff every day. We just actually revamped the website. So uh, we got some some stuff that we're adding. Good content in there. Let us know what you think. And um, getting back to the um, to the beginning, to the story. Okay. So. Um, I got into cigars, yeah, being a, a really hardcore cigar geek and, and heading out into lounges, trying a lot of different um, manufacturer blends. You know, I tried the classics, everything from Fuente to Padron to to boot, small boutiques. And then, um, you know, I just, you know, had the had the urge that I should do something and I wanted to do something. So, uh, you know, I headed out into uh, 
you know, Nicaragua, ventured out alone and, and, and started doing my homework, started finding out about this wonderful industry that we're in um, and the people, which are, are really important uh, behind behind this whole industry and, and, and how they form this beautiful, beautiful uh, cigars, beautiful cigars that we come to, to enjoy, right. And share with friends and family. And, right. and that's kind of like where I started and, and I just started learning and learning and kept learning and revisiting and doing that type of thing. So when you, when you first, do you remember your first cigar at all? Like, do you remember the first time you, you cut a cigar and you toasted it and you lit it up? Do you remember which one that was? I do not at the moment, to be honest. I, I don't, <laughs> was it, I don't was it, remember. Was it love at first puff? Was it like, oh, this is this is it. This is this is my jam. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It was like I found it to be really, really interesting, intriguing, and and I wanted to know more about it. And and I was fascinated, fascinated by the by the craft. So, so you I, you got you said you were a geek. You said you're a cigar geek. Like you so did you so you got in. So you got into the weeds then you got into the, not just the, what the binder and the wrapper and the filler are, but you got into like what farm it came from and, and uh, country of origin and, and everything from seed to shelf then. Exactly. That's what I, I set out to do to find out as much as I could. So when you, you visited Nicaragua, you, you just kind of fell in love with it. Absolutely. It was a uh, instant love. I, I just, it, I just, it took me deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole and I just, you know, I took that red pill or whatever it is that uh, Morpheus gives a <laughs> Neo. You know? Nice way to way to bring that into uh, something that's you know with the new Matrix movie coming out. I like that. Yes. So, so, so you 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 fell down this rabbit hole and you just kept going deeper and deeper and deeper. What prompted you to to start the company to start Reynado Cigars? Because it is from everyone I've talked to in the industry, it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of passion and a lot of patience and a lot of trial and error. Like what, what prompted you to say, yeah, this is it. This is what I want to do. Sheer lunacy. I think it just, <laughs> just sheer <laughs> lunacy. I just, you know, when, when you, I just, yeah, I just went for it, man. I mean, when you, when I'm that type of person, when I feel strongly, when I feel strongly about something, I just go head first, feed in everything. It's a hundred per two hundred percent, 300 percent for me. All right. So, so that takes us to, you started the company, uh, in what, 2010, 20, uh, 2009. I think it's 2009 when I formally launched and I went to a, my first trade show. And, and between 2009 and, and 2014, you guys put out, what was it? Three different lines, uh, with a, several different Vitolas and, and, and different, um, wrappers and, and different blends. And you yeah. guys were pretty successful. Like you had, you had a lot of traction at the time, and I'm going to reference this this um, article from Cigar Coop. Um, okay. And, and I'll put the link in the show notes along with the link to ReynadoPremiumCigars.com. Thank um, you. So that everybody can go visit that and check out your website and check it out, uh, everything that you're doing. But you guys had a lot of traction, and reading this article really gave me, because I didn't start my cigar journey until 2018, so yeah. this had been four years before that, but in December of 2018, uh, there was a feature story on cigarcoop.com called Remembering the Renato Empire. And that used to be what you guys were affectionately called in, in and around the industry and the community. They would call you the Renato Empire. And so you yeah. guys had a lot of traction and a lot of initial success. And as Cigar Coop mentioned, you didn't have the the sophomore jinx that a lot of folks do when they put out a cigar and everyone loves it. And then the second cigar is, ah, it's good, but it's not as good as the first. The second one was just as good, if not better than the first one. So you had all this traction going on. And then all of a sudden you just quietly went like faded into the background, so to speak. Do you want to, can you tell us why you did that? Sure, sure. So we, when we first came out, we came out with the Reynado core line. Um, that was our first line that we came out with. And then we progressed into the Reynado Grand Empire Reserve. Um, if people remember that, and that had a secondary gold band on it that said uh, Grand Empire Reserve on it. And that was uh, like the crown jewel uh, for us, right? Uh, it did really well. It was a five by 55 box press is what we first put out. And then we rolled out a Toro in that same blend. Um, 
which did really well. And I think we did a 660. I'm not sure in that blend. But the 5x55 is the one that I always like get a lot of uh, still acclaim for. If you can find it out there, that's like the uh, the unicorn of unicorns for us. Uh, <laughs> actually, a shop manager, Alex Martinez from Main Street Cigars here in Woodbridge he, in New Jersey. He um he smoked his last one in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was like, I want to smoke it with you because I did an event there for the Grand Apex. And he was like, ah, I got to smoke it with you, man. And he, it was like butter. He said it was like, just like it aged very well. Very That's awesome. Well. Um, but, um, you know, to your uh, to your question of, of our hiatus. So, yeah, we were picking up some momentum there. Uh, re- really good momentum. And then, um, you know, my father f- was diagnosed with dementia and it really devastated uh, our family. Uh, to the core, right? That really hit home for us. And we, you know, decided to, you know, make that a priority. And I wanted to dedicate, you know, a lot of time to that. So, you know, I said, let me back shelf the brand for a little bit uh, and and see what happens because we had to tend to that. So that being said, um, you know, my father's 92 years old now. He's still alive. Thank goodness. Thank God. He still uh, suffers from dementia. And, um, you know, it, it's the thing with, with that is everybody around the family suffers. And, and like like a lot of people have, have told me, I mean, the great thing about sharing stories is, is that you get to hear other people's uh, experiences. You get to share out. And I really appreciate everybody, you know, reaching out. I get DMs all the time about people who have sh- are sharing the same experiences or their loved ones are no longer with them, but you know, they really connect with this, uh, with this dementia, um, you know, devastation. So, and we are working closely, like our t-shirts have been on and we work with the dementia society of America and a portion of the proceeds from the grand apex goes directly to them. I posted, uh, you know, those donations as well, because we feel strongly about giving back for sure and helping about with this effort. So, you know, we're really thankful to, to everybody for supporting, you know, and, uh, and sharing out. So that's that's why we took the hiatus. And that's also, you know, to, to spin it positively, that's also why we dedicated our return, you know, to uh, for the brand. So the, the Grand Apex is very much dedicated to my father where, you know, he reached and I have it in the article. You know, the apex is the highest point that you can reach of success. And, you know, my dad did that when he came from Cuba. He supported his whole family, uh, you know, working in factories. And he built himself up to be vice president of, president of Chase Manhattan Bank and his division. And, you know, that was a great achievement. So we are dedicating. We want to, you know, honor that and do do our own success climb just like he did it. Yeah, and I think that's great. In the in the in the pack of cigars that I ordered from uh, Renato Premium Cigars uh, there was this there was this great excerpt from uh, a half wheel article that was written by uh, Patrick there. Yeah, where he's where, and I'll just quote it here, and I'll I'll put the link in the show notes for those of you that want to go read the entire article. Uh, Lamb's father came to the United States from Cuba in 1968, and while he had worked as a lawyer and held diplomas and degrees, none of those were recognized in his new home. He eventually took an entry-level job at Chase Manhattan Bank in New York, climbed the corporate ladder to the position of vice president, and it is that climb that the company's honoring, quote, paying tribute to his apex, his climb, and the efforts we all make to reach our apex, that highest point of success, uh, end quote, according to the information provided by the company, quote, my father always taught me to excel at whatever I chose to do, work hard, and never give up. That's such, that's powerful. That's because that's the power of, of family and a lot of people in and around the cigar industry. They get, they, they understand that there's some that don't, but there's a lot that, that really do. And so you have a great story, not only behind, uh, you know, the grand apex, but behind your company as well. So let me ask you this before your father, um, you know, really started to suffer from dementia. What did he think of you getting into the cigar industry and and the, the success that you were seeing early on? Was he very proud of you? He was. He was. He was um, not ideally probably what he wanted me to, <laughs> to see to be doing. Uh, Why aren't you a tradi- doctor? Why aren't you yeah, all, he, all fathers are the same? All fathers yeah. are the same. Yeah, yeah. He's a very traditional man. Um, 
but he supported me and he told me that, you know, that's what I want to do. Just, you know, go for it. Give it 120,000 percent. And and we're here for you. So, you know, he was he was supportive. And we I was very thankful for that. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I don't think he ever he ever thought maybe it might succeed, but but he was uh, he was supportive <laughs> and he was he was happy to see me happy. Ultimately, that's what any father wants. They just want to see their exactly. kids happy. Exactly. And so if you're you're obviously happy what you're doing, you enjoy it because you came back. So what what prompted you to come back? Why now? And and you know, was it is it the climate uh, of the cigar industry? Is it the second boom? Like what what made you think now is the time? To be honest, just a gut feeling, just just my gut. And I always go with my gut. If my gut is telling me to do something, I'm going to do it. So that's the way it was the first time when I launched. I just, you know, I felt like then was the time to 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 try and do it. And now, you know, I felt and we launched at the beginning of this year. We relaunched. I felt like it was a really, really the time for me you know, to start it again. So team Reynado, we just, you know, went after it and, and that's what, where we are. That's awesome. So what did you do in the interim during this hiatus that you were, you weren't producing cigars that you weren't blending, that you weren't um, doing Renato? What were you doing during that time? I know you were taking care of your family and your, and your dad, but I mean, you got to pay the bills, right? Yeah. Yeah. Were, I mean, what, I was uh, just the, you know, just, just working, working and, and doing what we needed to do to get, to get through it. That's awesome. Just, just, yeah. just doing whatever you need to do to, to, to get by. So let's Absolutely. talk about, so let's talk about, let's talk about the cigars. Let's talk about Renato. So yeah. it, back when you first launched, you had a very unique way of fermenting the tobacco leaves. Like for an industry that is pretty static and has been pretty static for centuries, uh, there's not a whole lot of innovation and there's not really a whole lot of innovation that you can kind of come up with because it's because it is a natural product and there's certain ways to do things but you found a way to uniquely ferment them and now that you're back you're you didn't do that with the grand apex do you plan to go back to that with future releases never say never as as they say but but i do not plan to because the um the first blends were were put out with another company a different company so and and this time around, we're working. We're fortunate enough to be um, working with Aganorsa Leaf, um, and that that whole team Aganorsa is like they are amazing. I just want to shout out Terrence Riley, Paul Palmer, Max Fernandez from Aganorsa, Eduardo Fernandez. Um, what I said, I've sat down with them and had some amazing conversations that are not about solely tobacco, but about family. Yep. They, they, they really, really, really took the initiative to support me when uh, I told them about my story, my situation, and what I wanted to do, my, the vision for the relaunch. And uh, their support is invaluable. I will thank them every day of my life for what they have and continue to do for this brand. You know, they, they're really doing great things, and we really, really appreciate it. We love it. Yeah, no, Terrence is, I, I've met Terrence a, a couple of times. Great dude. Yep. And, and they're one of those brands that get it. They understand family. And so it's it's great to see them uh, help you out and, and kind of uh, put their name on this because on, on the bands, it, it says uh, Renato Grand Apex blended yep. by Aganorsa. Yeah. Yeah. Talk, right. can you, can you talk about that process a little bit? I mean, coming back after, you know, almost, I'm going to guess that you've been working with Aganorsa for the last year. So let's say you left in 2014. So six years out of it, what was it like to come back, start essentially from scratch and with a new company and new farms and new tobacco? What was that like for you? Um, it was definitely daunting. It was definitely, um, you know, a little off-putting, you know, diving into the unknown. But, you know, as I said before, uh, Team Aganorsa has been, you know, very supportive since day one. So, and it was a good fit. I mean, you know, a lot of times in this business, personalities have to have to mesh and meld, right? Yeah. So I think that was there. That synergy was there. Um, and of course, you know, I wanted to work with them. There's a lot of companies out there, but they have some really, really outstanding tobacco 
that I wanted to uh, work with for a long time. So it kind of just like, it, it just kind of came together and, 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 and we're lucky to have that connection. So that, that's kind of like how that went down in a nutshell. In a nutshell. In how a nutshell. Did, how long did it take to blend this, the, the grand apex? A while, a while. It took longer than the, than the first time when I, I blended our, our initial blend years back because I wanted definitely to, to get it so, so, so exceptionally correct. You know, there's a lot writing on, on, you know, our, our relaunch. The first time we came out, nobody knew us. Who cares? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of like if we fail, we fail, but at least we took a shot. But this time it's like, we actually, we were pretty successful the first time. So there's a lot of uh, pressure, right? There's, there was, there, there, there still is a lot of pressure. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who don't know about us yet um, more than before, but there's still a lot to, for us to prove. I myself put a lot of pressure on myself to deliver quality and consistency. And I knew that Arganorsa was going to, to back that up. I mean, um, so that, that definitely was key for me. Um, and a lot of people ask me, you know, why do you only have one blend and why do you only have one size that you've come out with? It's well, a couple of reasons. The first time we launched, uh, especially the Grand Empire Reserve, I launched it in one size, the 555 box press. And I do that because uh, my my process and mode of thinking is I need to do one thing exceptionally correct and successful before I move on. That's just the way I am. I can't, you know, I'd rather not do two, 20 things, 30 things and have them be okay or whatever. I'm, I'm like a real stickler and perfectionist for that. Um, we, we took, we came out with the grand apex here, you know, a five and a half by 52, right? Parejo here. It's a Robusto extra. And, you know, this size is where I derived that the blend really shines at. I tried it in a bunch of different sizes, Vitolas, and, you know, we, I really love it at this size. I think this is where everything hits. And I was hoping that everybody would, would join me in that. Um, will we have uh, some more Vitolas? Possibly so. I mean, if, you know, if, uh, if it comes to that and, and, and the public calls for it and, and, you know, we want to do that, then, and, and it's going to be received. Well, yeah, sure. Why not? We might do that, but it, again, it's going to have to be somewhere where this, you know, the blend really shines at that Vitola, you know, who knows, there might be something down the pipe. I don't know. We'll see. It, it's a great cigar. Uh, and like I said, you, you go to, go to dot com and, and check out the review, which I haven't done yet. We're actually recording uh, it's the end of September, and this doesn't this doesn't come out till the middle of October. But uh, I, I've smoked two of them so far, and I've got to say, like they're they're really fantastic. There, uh, there's a Thank lot you. of different like there's a lot of different. It, it's complex. It's rich. It's it's meaty. It's chocolate. It's there's a little bit of fruit in there. Nice. I, I I really do like it, but there's an earthiness to it. It's it's a very grounded cigar, if that makes any sense at all. It's a very grounded cigar. Uh, but this is a departure from you in another aspect. And I don't know if you've disclosed what the wrapper binder filler is other than it's all just from Aganorsa, which I'm guessing it's all Nicaraguan. No, no, I have, I have said that the, uh, the wrapper is a uh, San Andreas Maduro. That's what I thought it was. That's what I thought it was, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I couldn't find that anywhere. Uh, so, so it, but it did look like a, a, a San Andreas and it definitely gives off some of the, um, general characteristics of a San, a San Andreas. Uh, so, uh, but it's it's very good. Why did you decide to go with the San Andreas? Because looking back, and again, I didn't get to smoke any of the original cigars, but the originals were all uh, lighter shades, lighter um, wrappers. They weren't they weren't San Andreas. And I know San Andreas in the last few years has become like the uh, the new hotness. A lot of blenders like that. What drew you to the San Andreas? Well, um, for one, I've never worked with San Andreas. Um, so that, that definitely was a draw for me. I was very, very interested in it. Um, number two, after sampling the blend with a variety of wrappers, the San Andreas, uh, Maduro wrapper is where, again, where the blend was really speaking to me. Um, I smoked it a lot with the San Andreas. I smoked it a lot with other wrappers. Um, it, it's kind of like when, um, I guess when you're, 
you you hear a, a musical composition and the notes just aren't you know harmonious with a couple of your compositions but all of a sudden you hear a harmonious composition and here it is and and that's what happened with the san andreas i just knew it as as, as i sampled it i just knew it it came together it's funny that you say that, that you bring up a musical composition, because that's it really struck me as, as that. I, I'm a musical guy. That's my, my back. So when I when I first lit it, it was just like it was like a band starting that first riff. It was very in your face. It was very yep. pepper and spice. And that first third, it kind of calms down a little bit, but it's still heavy. And then you get to that middle third. It's kind of like that interlude right before the course where it kind of calms down a little bit and everything kind of flows together. And then yep. that last third kind of brings everything together and it really hits. And I think I even, <laughs> I th- like, I think I even use a couple of uh, different musical uh, terms, uh, forte, like it gets really loud and then, yeah, it gets, yeah. and then it gets soft and then it kind of brings it back into like this great, it just ends perfect for me it's oh, a, it's a great it ends as a perfect cigar uh it, it's definitely for me it's an after dinner smoke it, it's a yep. dessert it's a dessert stick it's not something that i would typically smoke in the morning but at, like after dinner absolutely like that it's one of the one of the few that i like uh because i'm not a big san andreas guy okay. so I, I didn't have i didn't have high hopes but you like when you go in with low expectations it's easy to 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 you know knock it out of the park and you guys definitely did it's it's very very good um, Good to hear that. We've kind of talked about where you started, where you were, where you're at. Let's talk about Nicaragua because there's a lot of stuff going on in Nicaragua right, right now. Are you are you concerned at all with the political climate down there? Or are you just going to keep your head down and keep doing what you're doing? Um, I'm just going to keep my head down and do <laughs> keep doing what I'm doing for <laughs> sure. For sure. I mean, um, you know, you can worry about politics all, all day and, and you'll rack your head, you know, but um, yeah. I. Uh, I'm just going to keep uh, doing what I can when I can and, and forge ahead. That's, that's, that's what did, we do. Did COVID play a, a a part in when you, when you released? No, 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 not really. No, I would, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I try not to think of any uh, exterior factors that will affect anything that I'm doing. I mean, if you do that, you're never going to do anything <laughs> because there's always <laughs> something that comes up. Always, always the financials or an epidemic or something. <laughs> the, your pets are ill. Your children are <laughs> ill. No, no. If you think, no, no. I just, you know, I just, I just keep on doing what I, what I can. So I want to change gears a little bit. You're, you're a Jersey guy. I you're am. From, you're, you're, you're in New Jersey. I, that's far, far away from anything cigar tobacco related. I mean, there are shops there for sure. But yeah. you're far, far away. Like, is does that pose any issues like getting getting to Nicaragua or getting blends like uh, sent to you to get like is that like, what are the logistics of all that look like for you sitting out there in New Jersey? I actually love it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I, I like being uh, away from from where you're supposed to be. That's the kind of guy I am. I mean, if, if you know, I'm not the popular guy. I, you know, I just kind of like like sitting under the radar and then all of a sudden I come out of the radar and then I'm on the radar and then I go back out, you know, but I'm doing my thing. But so it, a lot of times I find it, it's good to be out of the fray because then you get to gain more focus and stuff and you're not. You know, a lot of people get caught in like that same kind of circles and stuff. I'm not I'm not about that. I was born in New Jersey and I, I feel very comfortable here. Um, and I, I, I just get good vibes in New Jersey. And someday someday I might move on from here. But right now I'm feeling it in New Jersey. I get a lot of love here um, from the people that matter, you know, from the people that matter. So for me, that's that's kind of the engine for me. And. And uh, positivity is happening in New Jersey, my friend. So I'm here. <laughs> I don't think I've heard anybody but you and Bon Jovi, uh, maybe Springsteen, <laughs> talk so highly of New Jersey. <laughs> That's right. Uh, hey, listen, if I'm writing on the coattails of John Bon Jovi, I'm not in a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, ta- you said, you know, coming in and out of the radar and, and popping your head up and then kind of going back down and just doing your thing. With B and M's, it's kind of a 
it's a different animal, right? Because they want to support you, but at the same time, they want you to support them. Yep. So when you when you went away for a while and, and you took care of family and now you're back, how has that conversation been with some of the old accounts? Is it, it are they like, oh man, I'm glad you're back. Uh, like, let's let's do some business, or is it? Well, you went away for a while and now you're back. I'm not. I want to kind of play, like, see how it goes. I'll hedge my bets a little bit. Um, for the most part, I would say like probably ninety nine over ninety five percent. It's been very receptive, very supportive. Uh, from definitely from the original accounts, um, you know, they 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 understand and they are definitely supporting the brand and, and just ask, what can we do? Yeah. You know, so um, mostly ob- uh, obviously from New Jersey uh, shops, but, uh, you know, we're, we're starting. I'm surprisingly happy to see how this momentum is going right now. I thought everybody would kind of like, you know, just kind of like be like a little off putting, but you know, the, the love and, and support has been better than I expected. And and thank you for that. Everybody, you know, shout out to all the BNMs. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy. I mean, again, Reynado is a microscopic boutique brand within the, the boutiques, right? We all know who the big boutiques are, but we're happy doing things one day at a time, servicing one client at a time and taking our time uh, to do the things that we need to do in the manner that, that is, is, you know, right for us. Everybody's business model is different and we're not chasing anybody. I'm not chasing anybody. So I'm just, I just want to, I just want to put out an amazingly quality product and if you like smoking it and you enjoy it and it brings about good vibes and to you, to you and your family, great. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a win. So you're not even chasing uh, the ghost of Renato uh, in 2014. You're just absolutely do- not. Absolutely not. The ghost of Renato wanted to be like all those other boutiques and he wanted to have a thousand accounts out of state, in state, across the country, international sales, like, like it was a very different, you know, vibe back then. Um, but you know, that also had its purpose. So I'm not, I'm not dis- discarding that, that ghost of Reynado. It brought us to where we are here. Right. Yeah, for sure. It's just, it's just kind of like refocusing, I think the lens now and moving forward. Do you think that because everyone changes, everyone evolves, everyone grows. Do you think that taking care of your family and putting your family first really helped focus you to get to where you're at today to have this grand apex out and kind of have that focus where, you know what, the past is the past and that's fine. And that helped, that helped shape who I am and got me to where I am today. But you know what, I'm a different person now and I want to do things a little bit differently. Now, do you think that had an impact on you and and your, your current business model and your current outlook on Renato? A hundred percent. A hundred percent that uh, that's definitely what how things have transpired. Yes, because it it puts things in perspective for you, doesn't it? Absolutely. It very much grounded, I think, the brand and 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 gives us, you know, a, a mission statement, huge mission statement to go forward. What is that mission statement? If you had to sum up what what it is right now, what what is your mission statement? <sighs> success for the family and for our friends, for our dear friends and family who believe in us, never gave up and want us to succeed in whatever capacity that is. They want us to succeed. And we cherish that in our core. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I want to talk a little bit about some other things, but before I do, cause this, this question keeps popping up in my mind and I, I can't, I can't get rid of it for whatever reason. You said your grandmothers are, uh, uh, Cuban. They're of Cuban descent. So, did they get to see you start this cigar thing? And if so, like, were they were they excited for it? I mean, because you're you have Cuban heritage. Yeah, yeah. Well, both my grandfathers died at a very younger age, like in their forties. So I never met them. And then, both uh, I only met one of my grandmothers. Um, the other one, who was on my mother's side, my maternal grandmother, she uh, passed away in Cuba. 
never met her. And uh, my my paternal grandmother never got to see, because she died beforehand, she never got to see me form Reynado. It would have been interesting, actually. That's an interesting question to see what she would have thought. She was a very, very traditional, hardcore Cuban woman <laughs> who, you know, my, me and my father would walk in. My father was maybe in his, like, uh, what was he, in his maybe 70s, mid-70s, and, and you know, he'd do something that she didn't approve of, and he, she'd whack him in the butt. <laughs> I was like, like, hey, buddy, you're still my son, you know? Like, I was like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> not fly right. <laughs> yeah, fly right, brother. I'll still knock you. So I was like, whoa. So that's a, that's the kind of like, yeah, um, upbringing that, that, that went on, you know, very, very traditional. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So I had to get that question out. It would bother me. I couldn't believe I didn't ask that earlier. Of course. Uh, so you, you mentioned being boutique and there's different levels of boutique and Jeremy Castell, like, like he has this, this uh, phrase boutique is fuck that that's the phrase that he uses. You guys are definitely, I think in that definitely, you guys are boutique as fuck. But what does boutique mean to you? Because in the industry, there's a wide uh, array of definitions for that. And some people call Drew Estate boutique still, and I'm not one of them. Uh, Tatawahe, I'm not one of them. It calls Tata. There are some that outgrew the boutique label. For yeah. you, what is boutique? For me, uh, boutique is working at a really, 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 really small scale and production and, and really being able to take the time and, you know, that kind of like tobacco, give that tobacco the time when you blend, okay, and, and, and just really be able to focus on that, on products in a really, really careful manner. For me, that's, that's I think, at its core what boutique is for me. I mean, I don't know. It could be different for every uh, anybody else. So coming back into the industry, uh, notoriously, somebody that I've talked to in the industry, and it may have been on a podcast, but I never mentioned their name because I don't know if it was on a podcast. It may have been afterwards. But they had said that the, that the cigar industry is a lot like the Old West, where above the table, everyone's sitting at a poker table, uh, and they're all happy and they're playing cards and they're helping each other out and they're laughing and they're having a good time. But underneath the table, everybody has their guns drawn on everybody else. Is that, is that accurate? Or if you, cause there are some in the industry that like, there are those in the industry that just are more than willing to help you out with time, knowledge, and whatever it is you need. Like what has your experience been? Because you have a very unique background and you have a very unique situation coming back in after you were already already in what have you found the industry to be like is it is it is it welcoming for you i'm gonna be totally honest with you i'm not even at the table <laughs> <laughs> you know so kudos to the people who are at the table and got there i'm not even in the room brother <laughs> <laughs> reynado has left the building i'm not in there yeah and it doesn't sound like you care to be no like I said, like I said, the uh, the when I started out, yeah, I really much wanted to to be at the table, and I would do anything to get to be at the table. But right now, look, man, I'm just like making the products that I want to make, and I want to do it right, and I want people to enjoy them. Let let the those people who have their guns drawn fight among themselves. I'm I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> That's I'm, awesome. <laughs> I'm fine. You know, <laughs> what does your reach look like? Like where can people find outside of, you know, Renato premium cigars.com? Where can people find your product? I mean, um, you know, we're slowly building up our brick and mortar presence. Those retailers are listed um, on the website. And, um, you know, we're also, we're also talking with, you know, some people to see if we can, uh, you know, do other things to, uh, you know, to bring, Reynado, you know, to other establishments, but again, we're, we're making, you know, the right paths and doing it the right way. So we're not rushing. There you go. So this is a, a the, the grand apex comes in a box of 20. You can get, you can get five packs. What's the MSRP on, on, on the, uh, yeah, that's a beautiful, but I love the blue by the way, which oh, I, was gonna, I was going to ask about that because uh, again, in your earlier iteration, the ghost of uh, the ghost of, of, of Reynado, so to speak, it was a different band. It was it was a red 
with with the gold and this is blue with white and black lettering so what why the change well that's a that's actually a really good question so wow a lot of, you know there there's a there there's a couple of things to say there because we did contemplate bringing back the traditional Reynado uh brand look and that classic logo it it very much had a classic cuban feel to it yeah yes it did and that was that was our inspiration um we did keep the crown yes the crown, uh, yeah. our, our crown symbol but we wanted to give it a more modern look it, it had to be kind of like revamped but not so far away and we also wanted to work with um to come out with this blue because this is a very much a power blue it's a blue i think that resonates with a lot of people i did uh, my own focus groups on on my dog and stuff so my dog kind of like you know gave it the, <laughs> it gave the it the, yeah no but we had uh very close friends of ours and family um very much look at this and 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 give us you know very good input for the branding that you see here we couldn't have done it without those individuals i'm very glad that they're in our lives and we really really gave this a hard hard you know process for the branding um so that's where we ended up giving it um you know that kind of look where people will notice this box it's a it's a you know relatively small box you know we took a chance making this this format it's a slide top that also you know hinges up here and you can you can have it hinged on there yeah and have it dis have it displayed in the humidor in store have it displayed in the humidor really nice that people that you know the bnms enjoy um but it really commands attention i think it's a powerful box for the size of it it really commands your attention gets 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 you there and then you see oh it's uh you know it's an aganorsa made product let's let's try it you know and and that therein also there lies the expectation is it is it is it good you know, so well, I can answer that question for everybody. It is go try it. Thank you. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm glad people are liking it, like yourself. Um, so that that's kind of like where uh, where that came from. A lot of a lot has changed in the in the seven years since uh, you know the ghost of Renato kind of went away a little bit. A lot has changed. How are you utilizing social media, or or are you? I know you're on Instagram, and that's how you and I hooked up. Uh, was on Instagram. What does that look like for you guys now? Because seven years ago, like that wasn't really that big of a deal. I think people were on Facebook and most people may have still been on MySpace. So I, I know that uh, uh, Matt Booth is, was definitely on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> he might still be on, he's everywhere. So he might still be on MySpace. He has that account. I message him all the time trying to get his attention. He never responds. I mean, I feel really <laughs> neglected. I love you, Matt. I love you, brother. He knows I love him. <laughs> I got to bust his chops. Um, he had a, like a cute little uh, emoji on there. And anyway, um, anyway, uh, <laughs> no, no, we, we really, uh, you know, we're doing a social media on a, on a, on a moderate level. I think a, a lot, a lot of presence on Instagram and Facebook and, uh, but not much else. I mean, that's a full-time job. And I, you know, really like, is. Steve, like Steve Saka says, like Steve Saka is like, do you want me to be a blender? You want me to be a, a social media person? You know, he, you can't be in so many places and be an expert like that. It, it takes a lot of time. So, I mean, I love, I love talking to people and I welcome your, your emails and the DMS and all of that stuff. Uh, you know, it's kind of like you, you, you're, we're doing what we can, you know what I'm saying? So yep. Uh, I, you know, I absolutely I, do. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what happens. I mean, you know, you know how it is. So, you know, I put out news and stuff when, whenever I can, and uh, we, we're, we're just trying to keep up that presence. And and I and, and as a cigar geek, I like to see what other people are doing. So I'm constantly on Instagram, following people to see what they're smoking, to see you know what what what's new out there, or or, or things that they might have stashed away in their humidor that they all of a sudden pop out. And you're like, wow, you have one of those? Like you have an opus from whatever this this age. Wow. So I love seeing that. All right. So let's have a little bit of fun here before before we get out of here, Antonio. Like what what is in your humidor right now? Like what's the one cigar that's not Renato that you're pulling out that you're like, yeah, I'll smoke this because this is smoking really good right now. Oh boy. Um 
Because you're That's a geek. You're, you're like, I, a, like, like, I don't get into the weeds nearly as much as you do, but I get into the weeds a little bit. Some of the other guys out there, they're geeks like you. They get into it. So what are you smoking? What do you like? I'll tell you. I'll t- let me let me look right here. I have my uh, oh, where, hold on. Where is this? <laughs> well, that just tells me how many cigars you have right there. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I'm like going through my uh, a stash here. That, that that definitely gives you a clue. All right. I'm smoking this uh, Fume de Amor, and I don't know what what size this is to be honest. That looks like a Lonsdale or a Lancero. Yeah. I think it's more like a Lonsdale, but it's delicious. That's uh, Illusion. Yes, it is. Yes. Very, Very nice. tasty. I, yeah, I like that blend. How many, let, let, let me ask you this. I ask all my guests this because I, 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 I think it's fun. Yep. Um, how many cigars do you have right now in your humidor? Like how many are in your collection? Wow. I'm going to say how many in the collection? Boy, that's a hard one. Let's see. Uh. I'm gonna say I have like about 1,200 sticks. See that? I I don't know why my wife gets upset. I've got about 1,100. Like that that seems to be yeah where, where a lot of people are at. That's not I'm not hoarding them at all. I smoke them. <laughs> yeah. No. No. <laughs> Let me ask you: Do you think there are cigars that you should save, or do you think every cigar made should be smoked? Because there are guys who are like, I'm not smoking that. That's my last one. There's no more left anywhere. I'm gonna save that forever. I think there's a limit on that, but yeah, I, I do think that the, there are those special cigars like, uh, you know, that you really want to cherish and smoke maybe once every couple of years, you know what I'm saying? But, but definitely smoke them at some point. <laughs> I mean, but uh, you know, it took me a while to, to smoke through the core blend reserves that I had. I still probably have like a handful, but you know, definitely on special occasions, just take them out, enjoy them with something that you want to drink, you know, and, and just, and just enjoy them. That's why they're there. You know, I think a couple of years to let them sit is, is really a good, a good amount of time, you know? Yeah. I, I, I try not to let them sit more than that. Although I, I think I've gotten to the point now where I, like, I'm smoking two or three a day and I'm still somehow I end up with more than what I had at, than at the beginning of the day. So I don't, I don't wow. know. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the curse. <laughs> it is the curse. It absolutely is. So what's next for Renato? Like you guys are, you're, 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 you're really trying to get some traction again. You're, you're going out there, you're doing all the right things and it, you've got a great blend with this grand apex. Like you really do. If you haven't smoked it, you've got to go find it. If you can't find it at your local B and M uh, and you can't find it at, uh, at your online retailer, go to uh, a Renato cigar, a pre- Renato premium cigars.com. Uh, the link will be in the show notes uh, and, and do yourself a favor and at least give it a, give it a shot because I'm telling you, if you are a fan of San Andreas, if you are a fan of rich, deep, earthy smokes like this is this is the cigar for you um so so give it a shot but what's next for you guys um to be honest i don't know <laughs> i don't know there's 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 gonna be something in the works but at this point right now not sure it's gonna be down here in my gut antonio listens to his gut like that i did that's the thing about this this interview it's it's really it's refreshing to see somebody in the industry and this isn't a slam on anybody in the, in the industry. Cause like you said, everybody has a different way of doing business and everyone has a different way of doing things, but you really just kind of follow your intuition. You follow your hunches, you follow your gut and you're not interested in being that guy that you were seven years ago. You're not interested in chasing that guy. And you're certainly not interested in chasing everybody else. You just want to put out a great cigar, a cigar that you enjoy and that you hope others enjoy. And if success comes, Great. And if it doesn't, you're still going to keep doing what you're doing because you enjoy doing it. Because I enjoy doing it. And it does. It's 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 for a deeper cause this time. It's for my dad. It's for dementia. It's for everybody, you know, who can resonate with that and, and is concerned about family. There's a much bigger picture here. So that's kind of like where our focus is. Absolutely. There is a, a much bigger picture here. Spend time with your family, uh, guys, like nothing lasts forever. Make sure that you're 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 putting the time in with, with your family, with your friends, with the people who matter, and make sure that what you're doing in life, you're doing for them. Antonio Lamb, Renato Cigars, my friend, thank you so much for taking the time, sitting down with me. It was awesome. Hopefully we'll have you back on at a later date. We'll we'll see what's going on, what's new and what's uh what you've got planned, and we'll be able to catch up a little bit. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Best to you and your family. Always. Perfect. Thank you so much. 
Thank you for listening, everybody. Join me next time where I don't quite know what I'll be talking about, but I promise it'll be Simply Stogies. Stay smoky, friends. Thank you for listening to Simply Stogies. Please rate and review Simply Stogies on iTunes. You can follow James on his cigar journey on Instagram at Simply Stogies Podcast, all one word, and on Twitter at the Twitter handle at Simply Stogies.